f- fascinating how you're writing these series of books. And this one is really about uh, the, the, the AI race in military yeah. affairs. So first I wanna ask you, explain to us the power of AI. So you're a, you're a naval commander. What would AI allow you to do as a naval commander that you weren't able to do when you were actually commanding ships? Let me give you three very practical things. Number one, and it doesn't sound sexy, but it's logistics and maintenance. Artificial intelligence has the capability to predict when a particular set of maintenance functions are needed, make sure that the spare parts are in train, all of that done in a way that is much more efficient, much more capable. But that's huge because it keeps the ships in permanent readiness. Right? Absolutely. We always say in the military, the uh, amateurs are the ones talking about strategy. The professionals are focused on logistics. That's what wins wars. But number two, artificial intelligence will allow a commander, say I was the captain of a destroyer, which I was, if I had an AI advising me, plugged into my decision process. That AI would have access to every naval battle ever fought. It would be capable of scanning the horizon of history and whispering into the commander, you really ought to think about this. And then third and finally, and we're seeing the edges of this in Ukraine, drones, swarms, bringing them together in very lethal ways. Currently can't quite do that. Artificial intelligence will make swarming drones the greatest threat by mid-century. You talk a lot about the AI race, and it's really U.S. versus China. Yes. Who's ahead? U.S. marginally ahead. Our mutual friend Eric Schmidt uh, did a marvelous set of research on this a couple of years ago. And he would have said then, we're about a year ahead of China. My sense from my sources, China is closing that gap. Uh, This is the foot race that will determine geopolitical uh, superiority by mid-century. Are we building the right kind of military for that kind of world? Absolutely. And let me add another example in the terms of drones versus naval. Look what's happening in the Black Sea. The Russian Black Sea fleet A third of it is on the bottom of the Black Sea, drinking seawater, as we would say in the business. Why? Not because Ukraine has a navy. They don't. It's because the Ukrainians have used both air and surface drones. So to your question... those drones are amazing. The the minister showed them to me. They they look like toy boats, and they are really highly lethal drones that can sink these hundreds of millions of dollars worth of uh, warships. Correct. And so... The question then becomes, are the carriers still viable? I think they are for the moment, for the 10-year future, 15-year future. Boy, you get much beyond that. And the capacity of massive swarms of drones accompanied by cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, all linked together by artificial intelligence, it'll make those crown jewels of the fleet, our aircraft carriers, vulnerable. 